no longer be effective. During a conference call arranged by Penn State officials on March 5, 2021, United agreed to pay for McNaughton's care through the end of the planned year that August. Penn State immediately notified the family of the wonderful news while also apologizing for the stress this has caused Chris and your family. Behind the scenes, McNaughton's review had gone all the way to the top at United Student Health Plan Division, Kavanaugh, the nurse, said in a recorded conversation. We'll be back with more of this healthcare horror story on Face Palm America. I'm Beowulf Rockland. And now, more from a healthcare horror story. Inside United Health's effort to deny coverage for a patient's care by ProPublica.org and David Armstrong, Patrick Rucker, and Maya Miller. The family's relief was short lived. A month later, United started another review of McNaughton's care, overseen by Kavanaugh, to determine if it would pay for the treatment in the upcoming plan year. The nurse sent the McNaughton case to a company called Medical Review Institute of America. Insurers often turn to companies like MRIOA to review coverage decisions involving expensive treatments or specialized care. Kavanaugh, who was assigned to a special investigations unit at United, let her feelings about the matter be known in a recorded telephone call with a representative of MRIOA. This school, apparently, is a big client of ours, she said. Then she shared her opinion of McNaughton's treatment. Really, this is a case of a kid who's getting a drug way too much, like too much of a dose, Kavanaugh said. She said it was insane that they would even think that this is reasonable. And, to be honest with you, they're awfully pushy considering that we are paying through the end of the school year. MRIOA sent the case to Dr. Vikas Pabi, a gastroenterologist at UCLA Health and a professor at the university's medical school. His May 2021 review of McNaughton's case was just one of more than 300 Pabi did for MRIOA that month, for which he was paid $23,000 in total, according to a log of his work produced in the lawsuit. In a May 4, 2021 report, Pabby concluded McNaughton's treatment was not medically necessary because United's policies for the two drugs taken by McNaughton did not support using them in combination. Insurers spell out what services they cover in plan policies, lengthy documents that can be confusing and difficult to understand. Many policies, such as McNaughton's, contain a provision that treatments and procedures must be medically necessary in order to be covered. The definition of medically necessary differs by plan. Some don't even define the term. McNaughton's policy contains a five-part definition, including that the treatment must be in accordance with the standards of good medical policy and the most appropriate supply or level of service which can be safely provided. Behind the scenes at United, Opperman and Kavanaugh agreed that if McNaughton were to appeal Pappy's decision, the insurer would simply rule against him. I just think it's a waste of money and time to appeal and send it to another one when we know we're going to get the same answer, Opperman said, according to a recording in court files. At Opperman's urging, United decided to skip the usual appeals process and arrange for Pabby to have a so-called peer-to-peer discussion with Loftus, the Mayo physician treating McNaughton. Such a conversation in which a patient's doctor talks with an insurance company's doctor to advocate for the prescribed treatment, usually only occurs after a customer has appealed a denial and the appeal has been rejected. When Kavanaugh called Loftus' office to set up a conversation with Pabby, she explained it was an urgent matter and had been requested by McNaughton. You know, I've just gotten to know Christopher, she explained, although she had never spoken with him. We're trying to advocate and help and get this peer-to-peer set up. McNaughton, meanwhile, had no idea at the time that a United doctor had decided his treatment was unnecessary and that the insurer was trying to set up a phone call with his physician. 
In the peer-to-peer conversation, Loftus told Pabby that McNaughton had a very complicated case and that lower doses had not worked for him, according to an internal MRI OA memo. Following his conversation with Loftus, Pabby created a second report for United. He recommended the insurer pay for both drugs, but at reduced doses. He added new language saying that the safety of using both drugs at higher levels is not established. When Kavanaugh shared the May 12th decision from Pabby with others at United, her boss responded with an email calling it great news. Then Opperman sent an email that puzzled the McNaughtons. In it, Opperman claimed that Loftus and Pabby had agreed that McNaughton should be on significantly lower doses of both drugs. He said Loftus will work with the patient to start titrating them down or reducing the dosage to a normal dose range. Opperman wrote that United would cover McNaughton's treatment in the coming year, but only at the reduced doses. McNaughton didn't believe a word of it. He had already tried and failed treatment with those drugs at lower doses, and it was Loftus who had upped the doses leading to his remission from severe colitis. The only thing that made sense to McNaughton was that the treatment United said it would now pay for was dramatically cheaper, saving the company at least hundreds of thousands of dollars a year than his prescribed treatment because it sliced the size of the doses by more than half. When the company contacted Loftus for an explanation, they were outraged by what they heard. Loftus told them that he had never recommended lowering the dosage. In a letter, Loftus wrote that changing McNaughton's treatment would have serious detrimental effects on both his short-term and long-term health and could potentially involve life-threatening complications. This would ultimately incur far greater medical costs. Chris was on the doses suggested by United Healthcare before, and they were not at all effective. It would not be until the lawsuit that it would become clear how Loftus' conversations had been so seriously misrepresented. Under questioning by McNaughton's lawyers, Kavanaugh acknowledged that she was the source of the incorrect claim that McNaughton's doctor had agreed to a change in the treatment. I incorrectly made an assumption that they had come to some sort of agreement, she said in a deposition last August. It was my first peer-to-peer. I did not realize that that simply does not occur. When the McNaughton's first learned of Opperman's inaccurate report of the phone call with Loftus, it unnerved them. They started to question if their case would be fairly reviewed. When we got the denial and they lied about what Dr. Loftus said, it just hit me that none of this matters, McNaughton said. They will just say or do anything to get rid of me. It delegitimized the entire review process. When I got that denial, I was crushed. The family tried to sort out the inaccurate report. United continued putting the McNaughton case in front of more company doctors. On May 21, 2021, United sent the case to one of its own doctors, Dr. Natty Cates, for an additional review. The review was marked Escalated Issue. Cates is a United Medical Director, a title used by many insurers for physicians who review cases. It is work he has been doing as an employee of health insurers since 1989 and at United since 2010. He has not practiced medicine since the early 90s. When he had practiced, Cates said, he hadn't treated patients with ulcerative colitis and had referred those cases to a gastroenterologist. He said his review of McNaughton's case primarily involved reading a United nurse's recommendation to deny his care and making sure that there wasn't a decimal place that was out of line. He said he copied and pasted the nurse's recommendation and typed agree on his review of McNaughton's case. Kate said that he does about 100 reviews a week. He said that in his reviews, he typically checks to see if any medications are prescribed in accordance with the insurer's guidelines, and if not, he denies it. United's policies, he said, prevented him from considering that McNaughton had failed other treatments or that Loftus was a leading expert in his field. You are giving zero weight to the treating doctor's opinion on the necessity of the treatment regimen, 
a lawyer asked Cates in his deposition. He responded, yeah. At the same time Cates was looking at McNaughton's case, yet another review was underway at MRIOA. United said it sent the case back to MRIOA after the insurer received the letter from Loftus warning of the life-threatening complications that might occur if the dosages were reduced. On May 24, 2021, the new report requested by MRIOA arrived. It came to a completely different conclusion than all of the previous reviews. Dr. Nitin Kumar, gastroenterologist in Illinois, concluded that McNaughton's established treatment plan was not only medically necessary and appropriate, but that lowering his doses can result in a lack of effective therapy of ulcerative colitis with complications of uncontrolled disease, including dysplasia leading to colorectal cancer, flare, hospitalization, need for surgery, and toxic megacolon. Unlike other doctors who produced reports for United, Kumar discussed the harm that McNaughton might suffer if United required him to change his treatment. His disease is significantly severe, with diagnosis at a young age, Kumar wrote. He has failed every biologic medication class recommended by guidelines. Therefore, guidelines can no longer be applied in this case. He cited six studies of patients using two biologic drugs together and wrote that they revealed no significant safety issues and found the therapy to be broadly successful. When Kavanaugh learned of Kumar's report, she quickly moved to quash it and get the case returned to Pabby according to her deposition. We need to take a quick break. This is Face Palm America. I'm Beowulf Rockland. We'll return momentarily with more from this healthcare horror story. We're back on Face Palm America, and we continue with this healthcare horror story. Inside United Health's effort to deny coverage for patients health care from propublica.org. In a recorded telephone call, Kavanaugh told an MRIOA representative that I had asked this to go back through Dr. Pabby and that it went through a different doctor and they had a much different result. After further case discussion, the MRIOA representative agreed to send the case back to Dr. Pabby. I appreciate that, Kavanaugh replied. I just want to make sure because, I mean, it's obviously a very different result than what we've been getting on this case. MRIOA case notes show that at 7.04 a.m. on May 25, 2021, Pabby was assigned to take a look at the case for the third time. At 7.27 a.m., the notes indicate Pabby again rejected McNaughton's treatment plan. While noting it was difficult to control McNaughton's ulcerative colitis, Pabby added that his doses far exceeded what is approved by literature and that the safety of the requested doses is not supported by literature. In a deposition, Kavanaugh said that after she opened the Kumar report and read that he was supporting McNaughton's current treatment plan, she immediately spoke to her supervisor, who told her to call MRIOA and have the case sent back to Pabby for review. Kavanaugh said she didn't save a copy of the Kumar report, nor did she forward it to anyone at United or to officials at Penn State who had been inquiring about the McNaughton case. I didn't because it shouldn't have existed, she said. It should have gone back to Dr. Pabby. When asked if the Kumar report caused any concerns given this warning that McNaughton risked cancer or hospitalization if his regimen were changed, Kavanaugh said she didn't read his full report. I saw that it was not the correct doctor. I saw... The initial outcome, and I was asked to send it back, she said. Kavanaugh added, I have a lot of empathy for this member, but it needed to go back to the peer-to-peer reviewer. In a court filing, United said Kavanaugh was correct in insisting that Pabby conduct the review and that MRIOA confirmed that Pabby should have been the one doing the review. The Kumar report was not provided to McNaughton when his lawyer, Jonathan Gesk, first asked United and MRIOA for any reviews of the case. 
guest discovered it by accident when he was listening to a recorded telephone call produced by United in which Kavanaugh mentioned a report number guest had not heard before. 